Welcome back. Welcome back. Look like uh, I have a marathon going on. Video number three. Had an interview Welcome this back. morning. Welcome back. <laughs> Look like uh, I have a marathon going on. Video number three. Let's, let's stop that. Okay. All right. Oh, right, yeah. Uh, got a marathon going on. Uh, feel pretty good. What a way to start the new year off. First video I did this morning, interview with a brother, two hours long. Wait a few hours, hour and a half video lecture. And now, um, number three, which this one is about, uh, I have it limited to an hour. I might have to come back. I want to try to say everything I need to say in this hour. So let me get started real quick. Of course, you know, this is the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Uh, I am your host, Angel Stumping Up 7, your soul brother, number one. That being out of the way, I have an hour. So let me try to get busy on this busy. The topic that we've chosen to speak in these few minutes, black nation building is nonsense. With all due respect, I'm not trying to uh, make marker of anyone who believes in black nation building. I, I want to build a, my own nation. There's nothing wrong with that concept. There's nothing wrong with that idea. The problem is our delusional, unrealistic way of looking at things. And I will explain that in just a second. I received a telephone call. As many of you know, my telephone number has always, since the beginning of Angel Snub Number 7, from the very beginning, I always make myself available to the public. You can call me. You don't have to. You can cuss me out on the telephone. You know, you can talk to me on Skype. I've always made it available where people can inquire of me and talk with me in person. I have no problem with that at all. And I will promise to you, no matter how big I might become, I will always have that available, no matter what. I like to talk to people in person. I like to hear your voice, whether it's bad or good, whether you like me or don't. I like that interaction. I'm, I am old school. I'm used to dealing with people live and in person anyway. So a brother called me, watched a few of my videos, and brother called me elder, which is nice, I guess. I'm over 50 years old. I am elder to a lot of persons, I would guess, I assume. I usually don't get called elder. I don't know why, because technically I am. And we began to talk. But then brother started getting a little disappointed because he did not know that I reject <laughs> black scholarship teachings. I question the scholars. I question Dr. Ben and Dr. Clark and Ivan Sermo, Sir, Sir, what's the I, Ivan Sermo, Y'all scholars, I don't keep it with all that stuff. I question the scholarship. I question the beliefs in this African, pro-black, African. Y'all know I question all these things because I view them. And in my observation, I see them as a bunch of fairy tales, more delusions, something to replace Christianity. But it sounds just as fictional and fantasy as anything that coming from up out of the Christian teachings or church. So I have to reject those different things. And brother sort of got upset a little bit. How can you be an elder and reject such things that the, the scholars, these, these teachers, and, and especially he did not like the fact, of course, I reject the label African. I question those things. How could you be an elder 
and you don't you you don't embrace and you and you, you what, what, I mean I don't understand man what is wrong with you in these black scholarship teachings or whatever speaking with him he believes that before the white man dark skinned people on the African continent lived in some type of utopia. They were peaceful people and, and, and whatever. There are no signs that the dark skinned people on that continent lived in some type of utopia. There's no, there's no evidence of that. There's no history of that. There's no recorded history where somebody was saying, well, prior to the to these strange people we call call white folks. We were living a people. There's no evidence to that. And I am basing my observation that it is false based on current behavior. And I'll give you a goldfish for an example. All of us know what a goldfish is. I hope some of y'all had goldfish as pets. Have you ever seen a goldfish fight? Now, I raise goldfish, and it's very rare that you see goldfish picking on each other. They don't fight. They're very docile fish. No matter where you find them, no matter what history about the goldfish, you will find that goldfish are docile. No matter what. You don't see that in the history of dark-skinned people, these Africans. Very violent. You think that the cracker is violent. Some of these people, very, very violent. And even to this day, right now, the horror, some of these uh, African immigrants that come over here and talk about what happened to their families and things over there right now. But yet and still, you're going to come and tell me that these dark-skinned people on the African continent, they, they live in some type of utopia. I, don't, I, can't, I, I just can't get with that. It don't, it don't make sense. How do you become a criminal? You become a criminal, not because you stole a piece of bubble gum when you was nine years old. You become a crim criminal because there's a pattern of behavior. There's a pattern of behavior. But if you look at the pattern of behavior, the pattern of behavior does not paint itself like these dark skinned people were holy and righteous. Matter of fact, from your story that you told me, that you're telling me, the Caucasian people were sitting in Europe, minding their damn business, and you were sitting in Africa, right? And you're going to bring your civilization to the savage, which is the Caucasian people. Mind you, they're not bothering you at all. They did not come to you. They did not start coming to you until you went to them first, right? That's your story. Because you're civilized. You want people to live like you do. So... You took your, your dark skin butt over to Europe, wherever these Caucasian people was at, and you saw them as savages. I'm gonna civilize them. I know better. I'm greater. I'm better. And when you hear these people talk about Africa and pro-black, that's how they talk. They are better. We the first to do this, and we're so great, and we have the supreme wisdom, and we were so smart. That's how they that's how they talk. How you doing, brother Leon? What is what is up? <laughs> But uh, so they went to Europe and messed with the Caucasian first, according to their story. And the Caucasian people became good students. And they began to catch on to information and began to evolve. And plus they were more, plus they were more aggressive than the, these so-called African folks. Then they went up. Then they began to come up out of their out of Europe, seeking material things like you taught them. And as they began to evolve in what you taught them, they began to see you who was the teacher. Now they view you as a savage, and now it's up to them to civilize your ass. That's that's the, not that's what I get from out of the story that you're telling me. You should have left them alone. Now you mad because you bother them first. They developed, raised up, now they're kicking you in the ass, and now you want to complain. You kick, according to your story, you are the one that kicked it off. So I don't know what you're complaining about. 
You created this Frankenstein. You, uh, you did it. And then in these black scholarship teachings and, and all these things like that, they keep telling me about how great Africans, the dark-skinned people are. We had all this technology and all this knowledge, Timbuktu in the libraries, and, and we are great martial artists. Whatever, whatever you bring up, they said, well, you know, black people did that first, and, and we're great. And how the hell, how the hell did somebody like you become a damn slave? If you got, if you great at martial arts, you have the best technology, you great at all these different things, then you please explain to me. How the hell did somebody like that become a slave? Explain that to me, because it's mind-boggling. I don't understand. Then they come up with these excuses. Well, you know, uh, we became arrogant, and God did. God, not a, now you want to blame things on God. God decided to punish us because we became arrogant, and he allowed the, yeah, whatever. Okay, all right. I'm, I'm just not into these fictional stories. If it don't make sense, something is wrong, people. Something is wrong. Then he tells me that uh, civilizations were built peacefully. There's no nation that was built peacefully, not no large civilization. They were built by a certain group coming up, they needed more land, they needed more space for their people, and they usually went to war with their next door neighbors and conquered their next door neighbors. That's how they began to grow out. One example is the Zulu nation. The Zulu nation started out small, and they, they had these wars. They went to war with their neighbors, and they absorbed their neighbors, and the Zulu nation got bigger and bigger and bigger. That's usually how it goes. It don't go, it usually don't happen you go to your next door neighbor and say, hey, man, we need to come together so we can get big and we can do this as a team. That is, that's not how it go. You need something. You look at your neighbor. Yeah, they go to war and take over their neighbor. Matter of fact, some of these people you don't know ever existed because when they conquer people, when they destroy people, they usually destroy everything of them. You don't even know these people exist. There are many people who have been on this planet, conquered and destroyed. We don't know nothing about them because the conqueror, the conqueror goes in and usually destroy everything. You don't know nothing about these people at all. That's how things are done. That's just how it goes. The history that y'all love is the history of the conqueror. The history is told from the viewpoint of the conqueror. Many of the people that lost during the conflict you may not even get that story at all. You don't know nothing about it, period. The losers, because most times the losers, is, is, is over for them. They are totally destroyed. All the villages burned down, the books, anything related. Now, when the crackers decided to conquer Egypt and when they went through, when they went through Kemet, the, the sphinxes and the, two, and the, and the pyramid, all, a lot of that stuff, was hard to get rid of. That's the reason why it still exists because they didn't have the technology. They didn't know how to, they really couldn't and didn't have the time or whatever to blow and tear that stuff up. That's how conquerors do. They tear your mess up. Nothing about you exists. And right, Brother Leon, that's a fact. That's that's just a fact. How can I not be your, your elder and not bring you the truth? I'm not going to bring you. I know it hurts. Reality hurts, I know. And you must understand, I came from the same place you come from. I was taught these things. But now, as a mature person, I question and I re-examine what I was taught. And a lot of this stuff just don't make any sense. And if I and if I was if I was thinking on my own back then, I would have found that out a long time ago. But I was dependent on my elders to tell me the damn truth. It's not like it was their intent. It's not like they intentionally lied to me. But they was just giving me what they could comprehend. So brother tells me, well, uh, what about the scholars? The scholars, uh, they study 20, 50 years to bring us this information. They can't be wrong. 
There are people who have studied the Bible 50, 20, 50 years. When it's all said and done, Jesus do not exist. I don't care how much you study, Jesus don't exist. I don't care how much you study, you cannot present to us a God. You can study 2,000, 3,000 years. They have not shown, they have not produced this God yet. You have never personally met any God. That's why you are asked to believe. Because if God was a fact, there's no need to believe. And that's a fact. And you've been studying that for 20, 50 years. It's wrong. Don't mean nothing. So he tells me, you always wear that, the Malcolm X pen. Malcolm called us, called us African. Malcolm spoke within the information that he had during that time. This is 2018. We don't just take information no more. Many of us actually examine what we are taught. Malcolm and many of us, because they was looking for an identity, they was just accepting something that would, that would help them be, you know, identify as a, as a people, no more, no less. And they was taught about this African thing or whatever, and they embraced that. Never really deeply questioned it, like they did not question the Christianity that was given to us by our former slave masters and their children. We don't question that. And so when a black man, a soul brother or sister, bring us this information, we don't question them just like we didn't question Masa. It's the same thing. But when we begin to question the research, it's a totally different ball again. And we begin to see that something is wrong here. In 2018, you're going to continue to find the flaw and error in these teachings. We should not want that anymore. We have grown and we are more of an adult people now. And we want the truth. Regardless if that truth hurts or if it's good, it don't make any difference. Embrace the truth. It's more beneficial than living some type of fairy tale and lie. Because you got because it don't make any sense. If if black folks was so great, how could you again, if you were so great, how can somebody make a slave out of you? You're too great to be a slave. They tried to make slaves out of Asian people, didn't work. They fought the hell out of them. But everybody make a slave out of you, and you great. What's that, Tony the Tiger? You great. <laughs> a great slave. <laughs> they called you nigger. <laughs> It don't make no sense to me. I'm sorry. I, I just can't. I just can't do it. And as your elder, I have to bring you the truth from my experience because now my mind is liberated. I can see. What's that song? I can see clearly now. The rain is gone. I can see clearly now. Through the garbage that was given to us by the slave master, the oppressor, and also from our ancestors, who they was trying. Many of the they did not intend to purposely mislead you, but they could only guide you to what they knew. But now we see clearly the rain has gone. Now, I wanna to try to get everything I say within this hour. Y'all should be sick of me by now. <laughs> Been talking, it's a marathon. It's a marathon. Been talking since this morning. But uh, I just wanna, get this off my chest because I was thinking about this and uh, I want to reply, respond to those who keep talking about this black nation building stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. That's a good idea. It's a good idea. And if you want to try that, then do so. Mind you, you've been, you've been talking about this for a long time. And you haven't accomplished you haven't accomplished it yet. Do you know why you haven't accomplished it? Oh, well, I'm gonna tell you why. Okay, number one, you're a slave. The only thing you've ever known is slavery. I'm gonna build a nation. Easier said than done. You are a slave. You've never been independent from these races. Never. Tell me when you have been independent from these races. Never. How are you going to be independent and you've never left your masa house? How are you going to do it? 
never been independent. It's like a child that never have left their mother and father's house. They never lived on their own. They never had an apartment. They never lived on the camp, a, a dorm on the college. They never, how are they gonna do anything? They're not used to doing anything for themselves. You've been living with your mama and your daddy going on 500 years right here in the United States of America. How are you gonna build a nation? You can't even comprehend what that, what that is. Your, your idea of building a nation is delusional, it's unrealistic. You talk all this history, so you should have the history of how nations are founded and how they are built, and you just ignore it. Because if, you, if you're such a history buff and understand history, and you know how nations are built, you know you're not nowhere qualified, you're not qualified to do it, you're a slave. A baby must crawl before that baby can walk. Babies just don't come out the womb walking. If that happens, please show me where that ever happened. I've never seen a baby, no matter how big that child is, come out the womb and get to walking, unless you're a deer. You know, deer, the, 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 the babies, the fawn can be born, and within a few hours, that fawn, that baby deer can actually run. I've never seen a, a human being do that. So you must crawl before you walk. So you keep talking about a nation, you're not qualified to build no nation. You have not even created a neighborhood. What neighborhood in the United States that the so-called Negro, that y'all nation builders, that you, that you created and you control? You don't control and you have not even built a neighborhood. And from neighborhood comes a town. What towns do you control? What towns do you own? None. Then from the town comes a city. City comes a state. States turn into, can turn into a nation. That's the protocol. You have accomplished nothing. You have not even crawled. You are still in the womb. Matter of fact, you're just some cells. You don't even turn into an embryo yet. You're a slave. More feel good talk for you. Instead of going to the Christian church, hollering, praise Jesus, praise Jesus. You on, you on YouTube and in some of these lecture halls that y'all rent, nation building, black power, nation building. You just replace Jesus with black power, nation building. Same stuff. Because it feel good for you. It feel good to be in church. Praise Jesus. Oh, Jesus going Jesus to gonna fix it. Jesus going to fix it. And that's how you are on social media at these debates and lectures. Black power, black power. Praise Marcus Garvey, praise Noble Juali, praise whatever. It's the same thing. When you're talking about building a nation, you have to have knowledge of all the various systems that you need. Sewer system, electrical system, water, all these different things that you have to take in consideration. You have no idea. You don't. Have, you don't have the manpower. None of this. It's not. It's not realistic. There's a show on cable called uh, uh, "Dirty Jobs," and this Caucasian guy go around and he show us the jobs that we didn't even know uh, exist. But these are the jobs. This is what it takes to build a nation because there's a lot of things that goes on in building a nation, being independent. Many of you and I, we don't have no concept of. I'm just going to build a nation. You're just going to wake up one day. I'm building a nation. That's not how it works. You don't you can't even comprehend. You're a slave. And that's all you've ever known. Oh, man, I, I'm unsubscribing to you. Angel something. You very you very negative. Bye. Adios, amigos. Hasta luego. All that kind of stuff. I'm going to bring you the truth. I'm not going to give you fairy tale because when it's all said and done you ain't gonna have no damn nation it's the, that's just the bottom line you can get angry and upset all you want to the bottom line just like jesus does not exist you keep talking about you can never, never prove jesus existed and you will never show that you can build a nation mind you these people that talk about building a nation never bring up liberia liberia is our ancestors who are our actual ancestors. You don't have to go to Kemet. You don't have to talk about some Hebrew Israelite more stuff. 
these persons, these persons actually are our ancestors that started, that established uh, Liberia. Well, you see, Liberia was started by white folks. You don't understand, eh, whatever. I don't. I understand that Liberia exists and they are us and they have done what you're talking about. They are actual Africans living on a continent. Why don't you help them? Since you, since you know so much, why don't you help our brothers and sisters, our real relatives, and go to Liberia? And then you can make them independent of America or Europe. Since you're so smart, you got the supreme wisdom, you know everything. They will laugh at you because they know exactly what it takes and they have created a nation for real. You have no idea, you have no concept at all. The only thing you can do, you don't know how to build a car. The only thing you know how to do is drive one. That's all you know how to do. You have no idea of what the of what the braking system is, the system, uh, the, 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 the water, the radiator system. The, uh, the, you have no idea of the systems of the car at all. The only thing you know how to do is get in the car and drive. That's your concept of nation building. You just get in the car and drive. You have no idea of how to build a nation at all. It's feel good stuff for you. Just like going to church. The problem with Liberia and a lot of the African nations is that even after the the cracker has gone, after these pepper woods have left the scene, they still have the white man's mentality. That's a problem too. You still, I don't care how much you call it black power, Kevin, the more, I don't care how much you, you still are a dark European, you still think like they do. That's why you can't even imagine a life without Facebook, without electricity, without uh, 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 YouTube, without a jacuzzi. You want to live like your masa. That's how you want to do it. And that's how they want to live, those Africans on that continent. They have that mindset. Matter of fact, many of them believe in Jesus. They believe in Jesus more than the Caucasian people do. Uh, what's the country? The country of Angola. Every time the, the, the Pope goes to Angola, those dark-skinned people go crazy. Oh, the Pope! Oh, what? They just they go nuts over in Angola. So, you have the, you have, in order to build a nation, you will never be successful anyway until you get rid of the mind of your impressor. That's why Africa itself is having problems. They have the mentality of the oppressor and they oppress themselves. There are people, that's why many of these African people are running away out. They, they try to get off the continent. You claim you want to go to the continent, which you don't. African people are risking their lives to come to America. Here you are, I'm so African. You're not risking your life trying to go there. And even if, even if you do go there, you want to be comfortable. You want your jacuzzi, you want your Mercedes Benz, you want your Euro European way of life and take it over there and live comfortable. That's not how things work. Y'all live, it, you, it's unrealistic. And you're so pro-African or whatever, but uh, you won't go over there and risk your life to go over there. In fact, you won't even send your remain. When you die, you won't even send your dead body to Africa to get buried. Or your body get cremated, you won't even send it to Africa. That's how much you love the whole idea. It's a bunch of feel good nonsense. So you make the whole concept of nation, nation building, it's a bunch of nonsense. It's not real. And you don't want to be around me because I'm going to tell you that. So I mess up your, your high. Oh man, I don't, I don't like what you say. I don't care. Bye. Go away. I don't like fakes and fraud. Y'all hypocrites and fakes and frauds anyway. I don't want you around me. Delusional, insane. I'm not here to. Uh, I'm not here to make you feel good. You have to understand the reality of what you're facing. You cannot even begin to comprehend what nation building is. It's a lot of sacrifice, 
and you're not ready for it. It might, it might, it might mean a lot of suffering. You're not ready for it. So let's say, for instance, if you are successful in building some nation, but this is what your nation will be. You know what a bar of soap is? A bar of soap represents clean. You know, you take a bath, you got your bar of soap. A bar of soap is used to make you clean. What happens to that bar of soap if you put it in a toilet with feces and urine in it? The, the bar of soap supposed to keep you clean and help to keep you clean or whatever, clean you of the filth. But what if the bar of soap falls into the film? Then it cannot do you no any good. So you can build a nation. But if your nation, no matter how good it is, if it is built and put into a world that is filthy and nasty, you're defeating the whole purpose. So what's the sense of building a nation if you're going to be just like what already exists that is filthy and nasty and dirty and corrupt? See, that's the problem of Europe. That's the problem of Africa. Asia, all over the planet. The whole planet, the whole human family all over the earth is screwed up. What are you going to do different? What's going to keep you from being filthy and nasty just like them? So what's the sense of building a nation when all that you're going to do is add to the damn problem? Becoming filthy and nasty. Makes no sense. So the God, I'm going to use a religious example or analogy because I come from that background and what is being said makes sense to me. So I like to use it. So the God in your scriptures say, behold, I make all things new. New does not necessarily mean new, new. If you recycle something, it becomes new, but it's of old material. Man, if you bought a new car, a two thousand, you driving a 2018 this year, but much, much of the material probably is recycled from old cars, from something else that's old. But as far as we know, this is a new car. So it don't necessarily mean that it's brand new. So the God says again, behold, I make all things new. And then in the scripture, it goes, it goes on to say, and the former things shall pass away. See, I love that part because it makes sense in order for us to have the proper chain that we need. The former thing, all this stuff that y'all talking about, the black scholarship teachers, the Jesus, and all these different things that we clogged our heads up with, you must allow them to pass away. That's the only way the kingdom of heaven can come into reality. Of, real, of the kingdom of heaven is in you. It cannot get out because your brain is all clogged up with all these black scholarship teachings and the supreme wisdoms and Jesus is coming back and, and all these, you just clogged up with all this stuff that your brain cannot function properly to bring into existence the heaven that you foam at the mouth about. You understand what I'm saying? You need something brand new because if you don't, the only thing you're going to do is be a bar soap to fall into the damn toilet and become just as nasty as, as what's in the toilet. So it's a so you're defeating the purpose of, the, of a nation just to be like everybody else. You don't you should not want to be like everybody else. That's the problem with the world. The world all over, regardless family is corrupted is in bad condition and you need to change your award-winning ways because at the rate the human family is going on right now you're looking at self-extinction and nobody regardless to race nobody is going to survive it you can try to, to avoid you can try to twist and, and turn and think that you're special and you think oh it, I mean, we just going to kill the Negro. Ain't nothing going to happen. No, this situation, you're putting yourself in a situation, all humanity, and maybe it's a good thing that all humanity be wiped off the face of earth and you will never be seen again. 
because you're acting very stupid. You have all this brain power, and we're acting very, very silly and stupid. We're not acting smart. We allow a small group of idiots to control plus whatever people on the planet. We allow this small minority to control this large majority, and they ain't nothing without your help. But, that, but, that's, but that's because we're so brainwashed. It's easy to kick these suckers out of power, but you won't do it because your mind is all messed up. You love being a slave. You love being exploited. You love being abused. It's the only life you've ever known. So to continue with an example from the scriptures, the God told uh, the, the God told Lot and his family, "I want you to leave Sodom and Gomorrah, and when you leave, don't even look back at the city. Just go on about your business. I got some. I got some business I gotta handle." I'm getting ready to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. So Lot and his wife, they packed their bags and they began to leave the city. The instructions by the God is, you do not look back. Don't even look back at that city. But as they left, Lot's wife, because there was something about that filth, there was something about that toilet stool, what God has to offer, good and clean, that's nice, but there's something in that sin, there's something that was there that made Lot's wife, I, I, got to, I got to take one last look. I got to take, I got to take one last pee pee. And as soon as she took a peek, she turned into, according to the scripture, she turned into uh, a pillar of salt. And that's the way it is with, with you. You cannot progress. You cannot move the way that you want because there's something about, you keep talking about um, Africa and all this stuff, but there's something about the European lifestyle. There's something about all of this that you like. You keep talking this African stuff, but I don't see none of these people living an African lifestyle. I don't see it. Because, the, because this European lifestyle is all that you know. You, you've been asked to leave, but I can't let go of Facebook. I can't let go of the air conditioner. I can't let go of the heater. I can't let go of the computer, my iPhone. There's something about the filth that you like. That's why you cannot progress. And the scriptures say, you cannot serve two masters. Either you're going to serve one or you're going to serve the other. You can't have it both ways. And clearly you have chosen your oppressor. And the rest of the stuff ain't nothing but some feel good crap. I asked the brother, and I'm going to conclude, and I'm right on time. I asked the brother, I said, uh, man, what if China... I'm just using China as an example, or, or anybody, the Congo, anybody. What if a nation said, look, we understand the problems of the Negro in America, all right? What if the Congo or China or some nation said, look, we have a block of land the size of Delaware or, or Rhode Island or something like that, and you guys can migrate. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing. <laughs> E more, you're right. What the hell is an African lifestyle? Hey, what, what's up? You know, what is an African lifestyle? What the hell is that? You have a continent of 52 countries, 700 tribes or whatever. I mean, 700 languages, countless tribes. What the hell is an African lifestyle? More questions. But what if they ask you, what if, what if this idea was presented to us? Are you willing? Now, it's up to you. You have to go in. There's no roads. There's no electricity. There's nothing there. Just the land. There's, there's some water, and you can hunt for your food. There's animals there that you can hunt, and you can grow peaches and whatever you want. 
You got to do all this, but it's yours. You'll be free. Ask the brother, what if what if that happened? And the, and the brother had to pause. What you pausing for? He's pausing because that's a hell of a lot of work. And you ain't ready. You ain't ready to do the real work. You ain't ready to go nowhere and chop down no trees, build no roads. You want to go somewhere where you can screw around, get in somebody's panties, and lay low and listen to listen to uh, rock music, whatever the hell you do, and and, then, uh, and eat steak and lobster and, and and swim around in the jacuzzi and stuff. You're a slave. You really don't want that. That's just, just a bunch of talk. You're not no nation builder. I would debate any of these people that talk about their nation building. And the first thing I want to see is your progress. Since you want to, you build a nation, what is your progress? What, how far did you get to your nation in 2017, 2016, 2015? Yo, you're not realistic. The first thing you have to do is secure land. What land are you going to use? In order to build a nation, you must have land. So if you have not secured land, how the hell are you going to even begin? You can't even entertain the thought of building a nation. And matter of fact, just like I gave this example, you don't want nobody to for you not ready for it. It's all feel good fairy tale crap. You don't want to be free for real. Because there's a price to pay to be free. You think one day you're going to wake up, these crackers here in America, they're going to say, you know something, John? We did the Negroes really, really bad. Let's, let's give them Alabama and Mississippi and, 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 and uh, Georgia. You think that's going to happen? That's not going to happen, period. It's not going to happen. Has not happened going on 500 years. And see, that's you like that idea because if the, if, the, if, the, if the crackers gave you Alabama, Georgia, and so forth, no European lifestyle, the way that you used to live. You don't have to, there's no blood, sweat, and tears, and no sacrifice on your part. You keep living the way that y'all you, fake. Don't bring that to me. Keep your Disneyland, Mickey Mouse ideas to yourself. You cannot bring that to this house. I'm not into that. I understand the reality, and my brother, Brother Minister Malcolm understood the reality of liberation and revolution and true nation building. The nation of Islam was not a nation. Matter of fact, the nation of Islam already technically exists. Well, peace to you with patience. Peace to eat, eat more. Peace to stomp down. And there's somebody else that was here too. Oh, my bro uh, brother uh, Leon was here. I seen that too. Peace to everybody. Peace and respect. You love y'all, man. For real. So, uh, you're not being realistic in this thing. And I'm not going to let you come around me with all that feel good fairy tale crap. I'm, I, I can't do it. I'm too old for fairy tales. I'm too old for that type of nonsense. I, I can't do it. Either I'm going to do, either I'm going to, uh, look, tongue tied. Either I'm going to be real with us. But uh, or I'm go going to leave you alone. Thank you. I love y'all too. And I am going to keep doing what I'm doing because it, it needs to be done. You have to have an alternative. You have somebody has to give us a reality check. Because clearly, you're not gonna go nowhere with this fantasy stuff. Just, you, you can't because it's not real. That's right. How are you going to build a nation and you can't even build camaraderie? You can't even view your you can't even view each other as brothers and sisters. How are you gonna build a nation? Because the nation is the people. When they talk about the house of God, the, the, the church is the people, not the actual building. The nation is the people. Oh wow. So uh, and as your elder, I know better. I'm not going to give you this fake stuff. Feel good. You have to see things in a real sense. I wish they had done that with me, but it was not their job. They cannot comprehend. But now I know better. And there are some other brothers and sisters who know. 
I, I guess, real close. <laughs> So with that said, I basically got that off my chest. And it's within the hour that I gave myself because it shouldn't have take that, taken that long. Uh, I really enjoyed this marathon. I won't see you probably until this weekend again. And I might not make any videos or whatever. I might cut and slice some of these videos that I've already done and you know make them shorter or whatever and, and post them. I might do that. I might not do anything this weekend or whatever. But uh, if there's any uh, subjects, any topics, anything that you want me to speak on, just uh, send me an email. Uh, my email, of course, is in the description box. And we can talk about that. Um, I really wish these persons who have a problem with what I say, um, come here. I'm not going to bite you. We can discuss that. I had a brother that I was speaking with, that I talk to all the time. We really don't agree 100% on things, but uh, you know, we, we had a decent conversation. Um, I try very hard not to speak when somebody else is talking. I don't like that because when you talk over somebody, nobody is heard. And you know, we get emotional. Stop right there, we start talking over one another. That's not good because I cannot hear you, you cannot hear me. I don't like that kind of stuff. I basically try to stay quiet, let you get whatever you want to say out to the point where you say, are you there, Angel, are you there? Because I'm just listening, I'm letting you talk. Then when I when you're finished, then I can say what I want to say. You know, try to be civil. But when I invite guests, I want somebody, I want you to understand, if I invite guests to my house, then it's their house. I want them to speak, I want them to, to do their thing. I'm not going to interfere with that. They are my guests. They are my guests and they get treated with respect. It's not about me no more. Now, if they come to debate, that's a different, whole different ball game. But I invited this brother as a guest. It's not about debate. And he wanted to try to make a debate. Let's debate black versus soul. No, we're not going to debate, debate anything. You, was, you were invited here as a guest and you be treated as a guest. This is your... This is your uh, your day. We can we can debate if you want to, which I'm not interested in really. We can do that on another occasion. Not gonna happen. So, with patience, you're appreciated. All of us aren't mature. A lot of a lot of our people are very childish. You see, see that's another thing. That's why we accept these fairy tale stories. You have to have a childlike mentality in order to embrace these things. When I was a, when I was a teenager, I didn't know any better. I was just going by the guidance of my uh, elders, hoping they was guiding me correct. I did not question. But as I matured, especially when I got into that situation of being incarcerated, I found out that all my supreme wisdom, all that supreme knowledge, all that stuff that I learned, it didn't do me no good. I had to get real information because that wasn't working at all, period. It was making my situation worse. And your situation is going to continue to get worse until you get proper knowledge, real knowledge, not all this feel good stuff. There's nothing wrong with warning your own nation. Yeah, fake hotels, yeah, right. There's nothing wrong with warning your own nation, your own nation. Not a, not a nation of Kemet trying to be somebody else. Not a nation of Moors and Hebrew Israelites and Muslim Arab wannabes. Be yourself. A soul brother and sister. Be who you are. Show your unique self. Trying to copy, trying to be an Egyptian or, or some Hebrew or Moor or whatever this stuff that you... Be yourself. Ain't nothing wrong with, with being yourself. And things will be much easier if you be yourself. Nothing wrong with that. Build on yourself. You can take, you can take things from Kemet. You can take things that you learn from the Hebrew Israelite, the Moors. You can take certain elements from that, but make it your own. Don't try to be somebody that you've never been. Then you look insane and you look crazy. For real, though. <laughs> for, for real. And I don't want us to look crazy. 
I know about I know about crazy. I lived 10 years in crazy. I'm an expert. I know crazy when I see it. <laughs> so I'm telling you, you look crazy trying to be something you've never been. There's nothing wrong with being a soul brother, soul sister, an African American or whatever you want to call yourself. Be who you are and what we become. There's no shame in it. We are what we, you cannot help what you were born and what we become. You cannot help. So with that said, I'm going to close this out. I'm going to look at my, uh, <laughs> with patience and we, with patience in the chat room said, we look like bat shit, brother. <laughs> we might as well, because we like to put on these costumes, dress up like Egyptian, might as well put on a bat suit. Come on, Robin, let's go beat the Joker up or something. Yeah. We look crazy trying to dress up with all these different hats and stuff. We look, oh, wow. Huh? Well, you know, E. Moore says, all these guys are liars and hustling. Yeah. I, you know, I, I can't argue with that. And, I mean, it, it, like a brother told me, it is what it is. They out here, you know, it's just like a woman using a woman. The only thing you want to do is get in her panties. You pop it and you gone. Hit and run. And that's what a lot of these suckers do to us because we just don't know no better. They see that you gullible. They go in, hit, get your get your sex, and gone. Not only the money, in, in a lot of cases, they get the sex too. They get the money and the sex, boom, and gone. You should be tired of getting used like that. You should, we should be tired of it. I know I am, and I don't want that for, for us. But unfortunately, I'm too real for many of you. You want to feel good. Well, keep feeling good. Let's see how that far that gets you. You know, some of us have a death wish. I can accept that you just wanted to die feeling good. Well, so be it. But for those of us who know better, I would suggest that we, I don't know how we're going to do it, but we need to link up some kind of way and unite. And maybe we have a chance. There are, there are 40 to 70 million dark-skinned people in this nation. Maybe if we can unify and use our resources, maybe we can reach them and get this job done so that we can counter the nonsense, the unrealistic things that these others are, are selling. They have to have another choice. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad told Malcolm, and he gave two glasses, a dirty glass and a clean glass. Offer the people the, the, the dirty glass, they'll drink the dirty glass, the water, because that's all they have. But if you give them a clean glass of water, somebody with common sense gonna choose the clean glass over the dirty glass. So we have to unite, those of us who know better, we have to unite to become that clean glass of water that they can have a choice. That's what we have to do. How we're gonna actually do it, I don't know but we need to get that done. Not just talking, we have to get it done because our lives are really at stake, believe it or not. That I will agree with many of these people. This is a life and death situation. But uh, yeah, but with that said, uh, my time is running out. I think I got six minutes left or whatever, but you know, it's all good. Uh, I enjoy speaking with us. And uh, yeah, it's a life and death situation. And uh, I'm glad that you did catch the, the end of, the, of my talk. And I'm glad that you did enjoy what I had to say with patience. Uh, of course, as you know, you can see what I said anytime because it's going to be posted. So, but you know, I have the time. And uh, tomorrow is not promised to us. So this might be my last video. Who knows? But maybe I can leave something behind that can help us in this struggle. Because I sincerely, I don't want nothing. I don't want nothing that this European or this world has impressed me. I'm not impressed. I'm not like Lot's wife. I don't care nothing about this stuff. The only thing I want is for us 
to be liberated and free of an oppressor once and for all. Once and for all. Get this beast off our back once and for all. We should be the generation to do that. Anybody after us shouldn't have to be bothered with this. We have the, we have the know-how. We have the power. We can do it. We don't want to because a lot of us love this filth. I'm not impressed. With that said, I'm out. And uh, peace to everybody in the chat room. Peace to all those who are listening. Peace to all, all those who will listen. This is your brother, soul brother number one, Angel Snuff number seven. As Don Cornelius always told us, as important, I wish us love, peace, and soul. Peace to you, brother Leon.